It's a Monday after the super blood wolf moon. Yeah, we didn't see it because it was raining here. It was cloudy. But tonight the moon is still pretty big here and yellow. So cool. It's, well, it's, it's just super blood wolf moon. This fucking the hype. Somebody the hype. said that sounded like someone's first LARP character and I couldn't disagree. <laughs> You know, I didn't like Super Blood Wolf Moon. I, I preferred uh, I, I preferred uh, Blood Wolf Moon on the Master System. That was a better mm. version. I like that game better. Yeah. Just Jesus Christ! It's it's all this. Have you noticed as the years have gone by, we keep hyping these meteorological events more and more. You remember Winter Storm Hydra? Winter yeah. Storm Gorgon. Yeah. That what was, was it? We had a polar vortex? Bomb cyclone! Yeah. I don't think it's that we're hyping them more. I think it's that we're seeing weather systems we haven't seen in a hundred fucking years because we're murdering the planet. But we hype them, though. I so crazy-ass shit is starting to happen. No, no, we do hype them. we're horrible. We do hype them. Because the Weather Channel, we're the... Trump, winter storm, Hydra, and now that people are like, we're tired of this. And he was like, winter storm, Paul. Winter storm, Jeremy. <laughs> so they've stopped with it. They, they've taken it down a bit, but just the super blood wolf moon. Yes, I know technically that was the correct terminology because it was a super moon, very close to the Earth. Blood I moon. I understand eclipse. how wolf comes in. Wolf moon is the first full moon of the year. Oh. So they're like, well, it's all these things at once. Super Blood Wolf Moon. No, I can't guys, wait for the movie, personally. Super Blood Wolf Moon, yeah. I hear they've already cast Tyler Lautner, and I think it's going to be amazing. <laughs> it's, you know, it, it's, it's like, that's it's the kind of comic book you would expect Rob Liefeld to draw. Yeah, or Three. whoever it was that did Tarot. Oh, which of the Black, yeah, Rose. Yeah. God. That's still, that, that's still running. Really? Really? Yes, there are still new issues. Wow. It's, it's like at 200 issues now. I don't understand how that's possible, and I've been working retail for 10 years. <laughs> like, I could definitely write a better story than that. <laughs> Samantha Brown. I could Brown. definitely do better than Samantha Brown, Your Vagina is Haunted. Your Vagina is Haunted. <laughs> I could definitely do better than that. And, like, <sighs> that person has more money than me. And I think that's unfair. All right. Well. It is that all having been said, it's it's time. Let me get the intro going. Because I did not have this ready and I should have. You'd think I'd learned by now. You'd think. It's only been 18 years. <laughs> well, how long has this bit been part of the show? A long time. I think I'm coming up on my decade. Each week, yeah, Catherine, the Radio Dead Air audience, go out in the worldwide interwebs. Find all sorts of horrible stuff. Bring it back here for a little segment we like to call What the Fuck's Wrong With You. And we're going to kick this one off a little different this week. Because you people, you wonderful people, quite often bring us uh, stories of all sorts of horrible shit. And thank I'm still you. having people send me the semen injection story. And I'm like, we got it. We got it. Um... But one thing you guys also do is sometimes you send us stories, but you get you get got when you send those stories. Now, it's not your fault because these stories are designed to get you. That's that's what this there, there's a whole cottage industry of this sort of stuff. And I got one this week that was a perfect example of a complete failure, a chain of failure top to bottom, that just bad journalism. Just, this this was either conscious bullshit or willful negligence or just, so let's start with the story um, that I was, that, I, that that was originally sent, and we'll, we'll, we'll break down what happened here. Does that, that sound, we're, we're methodical, we're scientific, and, well, let's break this down. Um, so it begins with this story, uh, that came from Idaho News 2. Hmm. 
Now let's have a look at this story. Um... Man accidentally proposes to girlfriend after taking sleep aid. By Alexandra Rodriguez. It's a Alex Rodriguez. Mm. Uh, according now, that's to a common name. I'm not saying it's yeah. fake. I'm just well, saying I feel for you. We'll break it around. Yeah. With that. Yeah. <laughs> um, West Palm Beach, Florida, CBS 12. Now, right off the bat, we have a CBS logo on this. That looks credible, right? It's it's and a, CBS. And a Florida dateline in an yep. Idaho paper. Yep, yep. But And then it references the New York Post. Yeah, well, we'll get there. Uh, according <laughs> according to the New York Post, one man proposed to his girlfriend after taking 40 milligrams of Ambien. Is that a lot of Ambien? I don't know how the dosages work. Apparently, the gist of this story is a guy got hopped up on Ambien and proposed to his girlfriend, and she accepted, and all this. And wow! And this isn't the only site that picked up the story. This also went to uh, uh, news.com.au. It's an Australian site that often has credible, uh, what we call journalism, which is, uh, um, and also we got Fox News, which. Depends on which Fox News you're talking about. There, <laughs> yeah. If it's, if it's a, like a local affiliate, you're usually okay. Right, right. All of these sites pick up this story. So let's, but they all, all of these sites reference the, the original New York Post story. So there's red flag number one. Nobody's doing their due diligence here. Nobody, right. Nobody, there's no name. Like, what's this guy's name? What's right? her name? Mm-hmm. Nobody did any independent reporting on this. Nobody verified the facts. Nobody added to the story. Nobody did their own investigation. Every one of these outlets and more, there was at least 10 more when I Googled this. What they did was they linked to the New York Post, they slightly rewrote the story, and they put it on their website. One source for all, like, of, all of these other New York news outlets. Post? One source for all of this stuff. So let's go and do something that people normally don't do. Let's click the link in the story that takes us to that original source. Because why would you want to read it twice so people don't click that link? Right. But let's do that. Let's do that. Here we go. Here's the original New York Post story. Man takes Ambien and accidentally proposes to his girlfriend. Oh, that is a lot of Ambien. An unidentified man recently confessed on Reddit that he accidentally proposed to his girlfriend after taking Ambien. Okay. I'ma stop you right there. I, right now, could go and start searching Reddit and find very popular posts with completely unsubstantiated claims and share these with you and call them news. This would be a lie. Yes. What you have to do is research. You have to find names. You have to be able to talk to people. You have to have facts and evidence because those are necessary for journalism. But like, why is this news anyway? No. First of all, I'm like, how many dudes have proposed drunk? It's the same thing. Mm. So why is this even like, why, why is this a thing? But even more, I have an ex who claimed he accidentally proposed to his ex-wife because he got her a ring for Christmas just because he thought it was pretty. And she assumed it was an engagement ring. Now, what's more? You're like, well... They did some research. If you go down here to the bottom of the story, they go, in 2017, New York Ma Magazine reported on the rise of things you did on Ambien. That's not uh -huh. research. No. That's called padding the word count. So what happened here was the New York Post grabbed a post off of Reddit, wrote it up into a news story, acted like it was a thing that happened, did no research or investigation. Then, at least a dozen other news outlets took this story, slightly rewrote it, 
and published it under their own bylines on their websites. None of them did any follow-up investigation. None of them did any other sort of attempts to reach out and verify the facts of the story. They just took something off the New York Post, copied it a little, and ba-boom, we've made news. And here's the weird part. I could see this happening like 10 years ago, but there's really, here in the United States, there's no such thing as a slow news day anymore. No, there isn't. Not really. Everything's on fire all the time. Yes. So it's not like you don't have anything to fill the pages. So as a result of all of this, reputable news sites with major network names on them published this story. People shared the headline everywhere and with no facts, no evidence, they created this uninformed spread of information that went out to however many hundreds and thousands of people read this. This is bad journalism. This is how this is why we're getting dumber. Everyone involved here failed to do their job. Your job is yeah. to inform the public. Yeah. So how quick ways to spot this kind of thing. One source, multiple sites linking all linking back to one source. No independent verification. No uh, additional uh, investigation. Nobody's name. No proper names, no locations. All of these are big red flags. Now, I'm not blaming anybody who gets called out by this because we are trained. An Idaho paper running a Florida story from a New York paper. We're trained to look to look to uh, uh, certain outlets as credible. Like we, there's a CBS logo, there's a Fox logo. We we look to these as though they are they have big important news organizations who they know what they're doing, so we trust them. And like I don't know how commonly known it is outside of the New York metro area that New York Post is bullshit. It's a tabloid rag, yeah, and best used for lining a litter box. Like, so I don't know if people in Idaho know that or if they're too far away and it doesn't matter to them because I don't know what Idaho papers are credible and which ones aren't like. So this is to help protect you from getting caught by this kind of nonsense. Um, like we just said, proper names, multiple sources, investigation. Also, I just feel like this doesn't live up to the high pedigree we've come to expect around here. <laughs> Like, guy proposes drunk. Guys, last week we had a guy mainlining jizz, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Step it up. All right, all right, all right. Uh, let, let, well, let's... T t okay, fine. I'm just going to let the headline on this one speak for itself. Okie dokie, then. <laughs> that's a story i want to hear like if i was this cop i would just sit back and be like okay i'm gonna go with you on this ride let's Th take this ride three syringes were found in a pinellas county man's rectum three syringes ow which he claimed rectum damn near killed him <laughs> That's like, you joke, but that's how the guy that got fucked by a horse died. A perforated colon. That could kill you because you go septic. <laughs> Three syringes were found in a Pinellas County man's rectum, which he claimed did not belong to him. Mm -hmm. A warrant was out for 40-year-old Wesley Dasher Scott on a drug charge. And deputies took him into custody. During his strip search, deputies with the Pinellas County Sheriff's Office said he removed three syringes from his rectum and handed it to them. Scott said he found them and they weren't his. You know, when I find a syringe... <laughs> when I find random medical waste lying around... The first thing I do is put it right up my butt. Hell Just yeah. Right up my because I that's mean, what else would you do with it? What where else does does discarded medical waste go? Right? <laughs> right up your keister. Obviously. Okay, John in the channel says, I swear, officer, I just wanted to see what it was like to be a bumblebee. <laughs> <laughs> to learn how 
how to push the little plunger with your colon. Oh, God. You could do that. You'd have a career in porn. You would. You would. Yeah, that's that's impressive. That's some that is some control going on there. Like, I know that's not mine is a tried and true drug excuse. <laughs> But when they have found it inside your person, unless it's like you got you, like it's the fucking movie Lucy and they knocked you out and did surgery on you. I think the rule kind of is once it's in your butt, it is yours. It's yours. <laughs> now. For the, yeah, that's yours now. Butt possession is nine tenths of the law. No one's going to want that back. No, that's that's definitely a you can keep it thing. That is no longer sanitary for mainlining jizz. Now, that's not to say you're not going to get in trouble for putting someone's stuff up your butt, but it does belong to you then, yeah. for better or worse. <laughs> how? What? How did you think that was going to work? Oh, those aren't mine. I just found those. <laughs> the look how did you come to shove the found objects up your ass, sir? Did you find them by falling on them with no <laughs> pants on? The look on his face kind of says everything. It's just like, what are you gonna you're gonna call me on it? It kind of looks like he's still trying to produce them. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. Oh, well, we have we have more excitement. You know, life is short. You got to you got to you, you live while you're here. Okay, yeah, that's true, but maybe sometimes you got to live in moderation. Smoking crack, sex while driving lands Nashua man under arrest in Manchester. This is from New Hampshire. I mean, that's their whole thing is live free or die. Oh, hell, God damn it. He did. So way to go. A Nashua man was allegedly smoking crack cocaine and receiving sexual acts at a red light Tuesday afternoon when two city police detectives walked up to his car. <laughs> Michael Doville, 51. I'm impressed, buddy. Was stopped <laughs> at the intersection of Union and Valley Streets about two blocks from police headquarters when the detectives approach. Instructed him to pull over the uh, once the light turned green, but he instead accelerated west and drove through the advanced auto parts parking lot at high speed. <laughs> the female passenger bolted and couldn't immediately be found. Harrington arrested Doville on charges of lewdness, disobeying a police officer, reckless conduct, and possession of crack cocaine. Well, you, damn it, sir. I don't know what's the more dangerous part of the crack pipe roadhead. <laughs> Is it cause a car accident or that he's going to drop a hot crack pipe on you? Yeah, you, that's one of those places where you don't want someone to jerk around real fast. No. Because something might come loose in all the commotion. Yeah. And like crack pipes are generally glass and hot. Yep. That's... And I don't want that dropped on my head ever. I just... Especially not while I'm distracted. I just, you know, <laughs> bless his fucking heart, man. Yeah, live free or die. Because <laughs> you know, he, he kind of took that shit to heart, didn't he? He did. <laughs> wow. And then to be like, oh shit, cheese it. With the <laughs> oh shit! T it's the fuzz, and you race through the advanced auto parts parking lot. You'll never take me alive. <laughs> oh, wait, what? Well, is jail is going to be really boring for you, sir. <laughs> I know. He's like, at least you've got a good jail story. Yeah. But what are you in for? Sit down. <laughs> I mean, you know what? People, you're going to like draw them in. They're going to be, you're yeah. going to get a crowd. You're going to be a fucking legend. You're going to be the tail spinner of the tribe. And you're going to be so bored. <laughs> Mike. You're not going to be getting crack and blowjobs. Mike, tell us again. 
Tell us the story. All right, younglings, come around and I'll tell you the time I got my knob polished while smoking crack. <laughs> I almost made it through the advanced auto parts lot, too. Uh, I like that the chick just took off. Well, yeah, wouldn't you? So who wouldn't? Who the fuck wouldn't? If you're like, see ya. I would. Mm -hmm. I would leave his ass in the dust. Yeah. None of this noise. Oh, Florida! Somebody to bail you out. <laughs> oh, Florida! We have a Florida story. Well, I okay. Um. Oh, the story disappeared. Let's put it back. Put it back. Naked lady in Mercedes busted in Indian River County. Now this one is kind of impressive. Look at that bleach wow. job. Yeah, that, that, that is like, that's almost transparent. That's like, you, you might as well just cover your hair in hay. <laughs> a naked woman got locked up after investigators said she was behind the wheel of a Mercedes while under the influence. Case against Cecilia Fayor, 52, began uh, in Indian River County uh, when they heard screams from a Vero Beach home. Nobody that looks that bad naked. <laughs> Dramatic much? The deputy went to the residence and heard a vehicle turn on. The garage door opened and the deputy saw reverse lights activate on a white Mercedes. A, quote, completely naked female was in the driver's seat. I love this part. This line of the story is the best one. It's unclear whether she wore a seatbelt. <laughs> I mean, if it's not clear if she was wearing a seatbelt, it's not clear if she was completely naked, is it? If, she, if she's... All right, so it's the middle of the night. All of a sudden, you hear screams... A naked woman runs out of the house, gets in the car, and tries to tear off in a Mercedes. And, identified as Fayer, the naked lady smelled of booze. An alcohol bottle was near the driver's side door. There's a story here! Yeah! What happened? They didn't ask? <laughs> they didn't. The, the affidavit doesn't specify where Fayer was, was going naked after midnight. How do you how do you not ask that question? Like, how do you not go, okay, ma'am? <laughs> we need to have us a heart to heart. <laughs> Break it down for us. Yeah. 200 words or less. Come on. Give us give us the skinny no, on this. No, fuck it. Spare no details. <laughs> give me the district fucking tation version. I need to know. Oh, you want what? the rhyme of the ancient mariner of my God naked... <laughs> I just, it, what the fuck? We're not, we're missing a- because the Florida baseball team are the Mariners. Uh, oh, okay, yes. Uh, we, we're, we, we, what happened? Yeah. Like, how do you not, was anybody else in the house? I don't say. Like, is it an orgy gone wrong? Did her shower, did like Pennywise come out of the drain in her shower? Because that was a fear of mine for a long time. You know, sometimes After in the... that miniseries. Sometimes in the middle of the night. Mariners is Seattle. Duh. It's the, what are they called? The Marlins. Oh. Whatever. Same letters. Close <laughs> enough. They both suck. Sometimes in the middle of the night, the, 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 the horror of it all just creeps in and you're like, Fuck it, you start screaming, you get really drunk, and you try to peel out in your car. It's true. Because why not now? I mean, I can't even tell you how many times I have had to, like, talk this guy <laughs> from peeling off in the car naked at three in the morning. <laughs> you know, Dan over there in the background, he's actually got notepad open, and he's keeping a tally of every time you pull this shit. I think somebody's brownies are getting thrown away. He knows who he married. <laughs> he's keeping receipts. Oh, uh, he oh. He signed on for. Oh, okay. This, every, everybody get ready to get mad. 
this is one of those everybody get mad stories because I'm already mad reading this shit. Oh, oh, this is from Madison, Wisconsin. Oh, fuck this guy. Fuck, ev fuck this, fuck you. Um, man takes axe to family car TV because he thought wife damaged action figures. Okay. Okay. A man wreaked havoc at his house Sunday night after taking an axe to the family car, TV, and other items after he thought his wife damaged his prized action figures. The man was arrested for domestic-related charges of disorderly conduct, damaged property. Damage was estimated to be about $5,000. The suspect called 911 himself because of his actions in response to drinking too much and then overreacting. Overreacting? <clears throat> when believing his wife had damaged some of his prized property. This is funny because I got an angry YouTube comment about how, like, men aren't emotionally unstable because it's always women who throw their shit at people. The yeah. And I'm just a fucking monster misandrist. The man got a log splitting axe and after his wife left the residence, he destroyed the TV, TV stand, laptop computer and other items in the house. He then moved outside and smashed the family car, chopping off both sides' mirrors and eventually striking the windshield with such force the axe became stuck. Arriving officers found the axe sticking out of the windshield. But did he carve his name into her leather seats? <laughs> Action fucking figures! Right? Like, I understand collecting. I get it. Some of that stuff's probably valuable. Maybe. Maybe not. But, like... Fuck you. <laughs> yes! I've got, well, I've got my guitars, I've got my amps, I've got my pedals, you know, and if something happened to those, I would be upset. I would be like, oh, man. Because I put a lot of work into them, and I collect them. But the I answer to that would not be getting more shit. Yes! I'm not going to smash my other shit because some shit got broken. So that's the thing, like, you responded to having your shit bite broken by breaking more of your own shit. Yeah, and I, I can't tell if $5,000 is going to cost more or less than... Your action figures. Hey, but you know what? It's really like, are we talking the lost Star Wars action figures? Like, the rare Luke one that they made by accident? Or are we talking like current run My Little Pony? You don't understand. It was this, the blue Sears Snagglepuss that was too tall because they only had pictures of his head. And in the actual movie, he was only three feet tall. But Kenner and Sears, they made one that was full size and he was blue. And they didn't make a whole lot of him. And, sh and is broken now. So fuck all this shit. The thing is, now that you have to buy a new TV and fix your car, you probably can't afford to replace those action figures. And you know what? I don't know how you're replacing the action figures. You smashed your computer. Goodbye, eBay. What's funny is it also doesn't specify whether it says he thought. Thought. Yeah. So she's he's just. She, so they might be fun. Or she might have had nothing to do with it. Maybe the fucking right. cat did it. This little or guy like, knocked shit over all the fucking time. Those action figures might be fine. They might be fine. And and I this lady I, I think she left. I think she was pretty much done with his shit. I would hope so. If she yes. wasn't, she's dumb. Yeah, like this is uh this is definitely when you dump a motherfucker. That's action. an action made of red flag. Yeah. Action fucking figures. You know what? I have no problem with people collecting stuff they like. And you know, especially with Transformers. Uh, Chris Ho on um, Twitter, and and well, Greg he also does those too. He talks about them a lot because it's, it's, I love getting Chris in person to talk about this because you think it's just like little Transformers toys. He's like, no, you should check out the engineering, the stuff they had to do to get all this to fit this one way and then fit this other way. 
and this was how they had to redesign this. And it's, it's, it's really interesting if you look about it. And, you know, cool. You like that stuff? Neat. But... I mean, people collect stuff. This poor guy moved into a house, moved in with me, and now he owns tons of hippo shit. So it's... And he has, like, 60 flavors of bitters. And I don't even know what bitters are, what they do. <clears throat> but we have them in every flavor. But and it's it's not. But if I broke one of those bottles of bitters, he probably wouldn't smash the TV. No. Yeah. In this instance, it's not the action figures we're kind of getting so worked up about. It's the no. taking an axe right. over action figures. Jesus. We have one more tonight. I think I think this falls into. Oh my God! Just the, the this fella's got moxie. I'll put it that way. This last story. I'm a little impressed, and I'm also a little saddened by the gullibility of major corporations, because it should be harder to do this, I feel. I'm a little disappointed. Um, I think Dan's hippo collection is largely involved. Yes, that's literally what I said. He has an involuntary hippo collection because of me. That's the point I was making. He said he was... drink scotch. She has $400 bottles of scotch, so... He said he was on the Phillies to swindle free gear. Now he faces decades in prison. Michael Glenn Barnes doesn't play for the Philadelphia Phillies. Not he, in those glasses, he fucking doesn't. He's not in the Canadian rock band Three Days Grace. But he admits he tricked companies into sending him more than $18,000 in free guitars, baseball gloves, and other equipment. By pretending to play for three different baseball teams and pretending to be in a handful of major music acts. You can just do that? Now he faces decades in prison after pleading guilty to 41 federal charges. The 37-year-old from Gun Barrel City, Texas made cell phone calls. I'm sorry, hey, I have to stop you. There's a place called Gun, Gun Barrel, Barrel City, City, Texas. Yes. <laughs> if, that, if you wrote that in a fiction, I would be like, that's too stereotypical to be real. <laughs> The 37-year-old made phone calls, sent out emails, text messages, and letters to perpetuate a scam between May 2015 and September 2017. Federal authorities got into his trail after C.F. Martin Guitar and Company of Upper Nazareth Township reported his attempt to swindle free guitars. Barnes admitted he posed as members of the Philadelphia Phillies, the Arizona Diamondbacks, and the Texas Rangers. At least he picks all teams that suck. He also, he also admitted he posed as members of the bands Three Days Grace, Drowning Pool, Red of Mice and Men, Memphis May Fire, and the Eli Young Band. He admitted to a federal agent he sold the items he received at a pawn shop. Um, here's what Barnes obtained illegally. A $1,199 Solo 2 Platinum Guitar from Schechter Guitars. He said he was in three days grace and asked for a loner guitar for a photo shoot. A $699 amplifier from Orange Music Electronics. He said he was in three days grace and wanted it to promote Orange Music and National Magazine interviews. Four guitar foot pedals worth $557 from McCaffrey Audio of Wausau, Wisconsin. He said he was in three days grace. A $305 baseball glove from Rawling Sports Goods of St. Louis. He said he was about to be called up to play for the Philadelphia Phillies. What do you have to do to a baseball glove to make it worth $300? Like, is that made out of baby skin? Ooh. That would be so soft, though. So that soft. is a modest proposal. <laughs> Just... It's a fucking baseball glove. Is it fucking diamond studded? Like, what the fuck? Is it the Victoria's Secret fantasy glove? <laughs> it just it just goes on. Two guitars worth $2,328 and an amplifier worth $1,649 from Paul Reed Smith Guitars. He said he was in the band of Mice and Men and would play the guitars on YouTube. He just made all of these wacky claims and nobody verified shit. They like just, you can just do that. They just sent him stuff. Can I just write to companies and be like, "I'm Florence Welch. Give me clothes." They just, they just handed him this. 
No, didn't like get like didn't check with management, didn't check for receipts, didn't actually call it. No, just like, oh, you're in, oh, you're in three days, Grace. Here's a bunch of shit. Have fun. Here's here's like two, three. You know what? I'm like, god damn. Everybody should no, 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 live, no, live, live in the channel. Is like, wow, I kind of want to try this now. Don't do it. No, no. Fraud. Yes. You will, go to prison. you will go to jail. This guy's going At to jail the same for time. All of these dumbass corporations deserve that shit. They do, cause you idiots. Like you're stealing from very wealthy corporations that shouldn't be stupid. Yeah, this is. No. This is kind of on them. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Uh, eighteen thousand dollars worth of stuff just because he said, "Oh yeah." Can I have this? Yeah. Okay. I'm Beyonce's personal assistant, and I need free chocolate chip cookies for life. Okay. It's important. They'll send over a few pallets in the morning. Part of this is this whole influencer culture thing. Yeah. I just watched the Fire documentary on Netflix this week. Yes! I made him watch it. And when he got to the part about what the guy had to do to get the water. <laughs> I don't know if you guys know what Dan does for a living. Dan is what's called an industrial organizational psychologist. Yeah. Which means you should probably tell them what it means because I'll get it wrong. I, uh, I know everything there is to do about hiring regarding psychology, law. That's what I do. He's like Captain Human Resource I'm Law. I'm a fucking nerd. So... He'll tell you, like, if you're doing unethical hiring practices. Yes. So he got to that part with the take one for the team to get the water. And he was like, and I was like, clearly there was no HR department. And he's like, what the fuck? <laughs> so the first thing we've learned this week. But that's a good ethical quandary, though. <laughs> if 10,000 people are going to be dehydrated and die, if you don't suck a guy's cock. <laughs> What do you do? So anyway, <laughs> the first thing we learned this week is uh, companies have massive control over our everyday lives and they're dirt fucking stupid. Yeah. That's terrifying. Mm -hmm. um, and they know everything about us, except who the fuck we are. We've learned when your shit gets broken... Do not break all the rest of your shit. Because then you have no shit. All your shit. You can't... And see, if one thing's broken, that's like part of your shit. Not all of your shit. All of your shit. Part of your shit is not all of your shit. Yeah. Did, did these people miss Sesame Street? These are basic <laughs> concepts here. <laughs> where, where, did they miss the day that Elmo taught them the difference between part of their shit and all of their shit? I don't think Elmo ever covered a whether or not you smash stuff with an axe because your toys got broken. I don't. I mean, I haven't watched Sesame Street in a long time. We've learned that you can't just run out in your car naked in the middle of the night, peel off screaming drunk without explaining why. I thought this was America. We've learned if you're going to go to jail, have a good story. God damn right. That that is you party your way to prison. We've learned that once something has gone up your butt, it's yours forever. Whether you like it or not, those are yours. If it's, once it's gone up your ass, you own it. Yep. And finally, we've learned that uh you need to check do a little be a, be a little credulous when it comes to news stories because the, the, there's a bunch of lazy motherfuckers right now who don't give a shit that they're setting the world on fire. Yeah. I, I. It's sad that, like, you do more due diligence for this internet bit. Oh my god, yeah. Than actual journalists who are professionals. I put in more research than people paid to do this professionally. Yeah. And I weep 
Be- so that you can scream fuck on the internet. Just now. so I can scream fuck on the fucking internet. Because <laughs> we don't want to scream fuck about shit that isn't true. We want to scream fuck about verifiable shit. Yes. Anyone can make up anything, any old goddamn shit they I mean, want. If we were just going to scream fuck about stuff we made up, this would be a whole different segment. We could do that. That, that would be yeah, a live journal. True. 